Hello YouTube and welcome to another Linux tutorial. So in this video I will show you how you can sync and backup your files and directories using a very famous command line program called rsync. So are you ready? Let's get started. So actually in my last video I will show you how you can use the scopy command which allows you to copy files between servers or between your machine and the remote server. But actually in this video I will show you how you can use the rsync. So the rsync command allows you to backup your files actually but also allows you to synchronize your files. It means that the first time you're copying the, your data they will copy it totally but the second time it will ju just check the differences and it will only copy the changed data so we'll gain in term of speed and the bandwidth so in order to show that I will just uh, show you an example here so I have subscribed on a free service called backup which actually is just a FTP based offsite backup service but this service is uh, totally free for uh, one user here as you can see it allows you to get 500 megabyte storage but the beauty of the service is is that you can use rsync command in order to backup your data okay so you can use whatever service you want i want just to use that as an example so you just create an account it's very easy then you are ready to transfer your data using the rsync command so here I will show you an example. So let's say that we have a folder here on my desktop called the backup and I want actually to transfer the content of this folder here to the remote server using the rsync command. So most of the time you will use the rsync command like this. So rsync then the options. So the most famous options that we will use is minus avh so a stands for actually archive modes so the archive modes allows you to transfer your data but it will preserves the permissions symbolic links user and group ownership so it's very important if you want to back up your data v stands for verbose mode so you can see what's going on and h for human readable format so the output will be just clear for you to get what's going on. So you can also use an option called progress. So we'll see how many data is transferring live. Okay. But a very important uh, option that you want to use for the first time is called the dry run option. So actually this option here allows you just to test or simulate the transfer. So it will not make any changes to your uh, local file or to your remote files. So use it just to test what's going on. Okay. So as simulation. And finally you, pr you provide your credentials with any service. So here I will provide credentials in order to get access to the remote server. So here are my credentials, Aminos Ninatos at host6.backup actually without C, backup.com and finally a dot because I will be transferring the data which reside on my desktop. So here I will add here the source files so they are on my desktop so the full path is like that desktop then backup okay but here there is a very important things to know so if you want to copy the whole folder I mean the folder itself with the content you have just to put the path like this if you want just to actually 
transfer the content, not the folder itself, you have to add a trailing slash. Okay. So when you add a trailing slash to your source files, it means that you want just to transfer the content of this folder here. So let's run this command. Okay. Here we go. We have an error. So let's see what's going on here. It said could not reserve hostname hosts.backup.com. Yes, because actually the server I'm going to connect is host 6, not host. Okay, so you see it's always good to run a test before. Okay, now it tries to connect to this remote server here. Okay, now I have to provide my password. I hope it's correct now. And here we go, you can see the files that are, that will be actually transferred. It's not yet, it's just a test. You can see here the dry run option uh, finally, which means that you have just run a test or simulation. So when you add a training slash, only the content of the backup will be transferred. So if you will run it without a training slash, so this time, it will actually copy also the folder name. So let's see. Here we go. You can see now backup slash, which means that also the folder will be transferred. So now we have just run a test. Let's actually do that in reality. So we'll remove the option dry run. Okay, here we go. password once again and now as you can see here the file has been transferred so you see finally how many bytes have been transferred so it's just a bunch of text files so it's only 7.61 kilobytes okay so always remember first to test using the dry run option then when everything is okay, you can execute your command. Okay. I will show you another very interesting uh, option. You can also uh, actually uh, with same command, but this time I will use another option called minus stats. So as the name suggests, it will give you just some statistics about the transfer. So let's run it once again. Here we go with the password. Now, in addition to the previous actually output, another options will be displayed in the output. But here, as you can see, nothing have been transferred because our remote server contains already the backup that we have actually sent. So let's, for example, just copy this file here as a test. So I will remove the desktop or the backup folder and I will just transfer a simple file called client client conf okay or actually client.conf okay it's configuration file ddc client dot conf okay so with option minus stats, we will see what's going on here. So I will run it. So I need password authentication. Yeah, you see, I have also done a mistake. I didn't uh, write desktop actually co correctly. So I missed the car desktop like this. Here we go once again. Okay. Now it's beautiful. You get what you want. So here only one file has been transferred. Okay. So it's pretty nice to do this option always. So let's say now that you want actually to log the transfer 
so if you want to log the transfer you can you can add another option so first let me change the source file so this time I will transfer this file here called H SSHT conf okay and I will replace the stat option with actually the log option so I will here make log file and we provide the full path to the, uh, to the log file so I will put the log on my desktop so I will provide the full path so it's on my home directory slash desktop and I will call it just a report.txt so you can rename it whatever you want so here I have added an option called log file so I will get a log about what's going on here I can add uh, also the option stats I made a mistake before because actually I have to add here two minus not one minus okay and let's run it again so as you can see the report has been created automatically on my desktop here we go and there is the option for the stats so without actually this stats option you will not get all this information here okay but now we have actually get it here the actually the file has not been transferred because it's already on the server because I was doing some tests that's why but we want just to know the log if it has been created or not actually it has been created if you open this file here with any editor you want you won't see what's going on it's a log about our transfer so it's always good to make a log of what you are doing or what you are backup in so we can come later to see what have been done okay so it's very very interesting option or command line program called rsync which allows you to actually uh, see what's going on here I think I made a mistake here about the file as you can see here the file doesn't exist actually it's called sshd config not conf so I'll run this command once again config now I'll not get the error as before here we go I mistyped my password so I have to run it once again okay now I have success actually so 59 bytes have been received which is good which is the actually the size of my file here so just remember to use this option here or this command line program called rsync it's very very interesting to use it whenever you want to transfer file from your local machine to any remote server and finally you can do you can do the reverse things for example let me delete this file here that I have been transferring and we want to get it back from the remote server so in order to do that it's pretty easy all you have to do is to change the source and the destination so here I will cut this destination here okay and I have to put it before the source this time here we go I have to delete the trailing uh, option here okay and let's put it on my desktop oh so so this is the command that we will be using so always our sync option source then destination so the source here will be our remote server 
and the destination will be our desktop. So let's run it. Okay. As you can see, I get back actually a bunch of folder here because I didn't specify just one one file, but I transferred the whole backup that I have done on my remote server. As you can see here on the option, I specify a dot, which means that I want all the content of the remote server to my desktop here. If you want just to transfer one file, you have to put it here. Okay, so if I want just to transfer from the remote server just the config file ssh config I put it here and let's delete this or just we can keep it if you want okay so just remember the option that you want to use first of all rsync then options then the source, then the destination. So the source can be a local file or local folder, and the destination can be also local or actually a remote server. So as you wish. So that was just a brief introduction how you can use the rsync command in Linux. As always, I hope it has been informative for you, and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye bye.